Giants by six and a half. You want the points? You're on. Five bucks? You got it. Hey, sellout. How's it going? I can't complain. Yes. Yeah. What's in the briefcase? Tens and twenties? Funny guy, Larry. I'll give him the message. Okay, love Morning, Steve. We're going to see him again, you little vixen. We're not going to get any work done. At the phone has been watch. ringing off the hook. Publishers, magazines. You've got Maggie Robbins at 10, Leah Chang at 11.15, and Mr. Van Allsburg at 11.30. I've put a selection of pieces on your desk. Hauser & Company's Charles Van Allsburg, the recently appointed chief operating officer of Lone Sons. Maybe new to the literary world, but has announced that he is very much looking forward to adding the venerable publishing firm to his list of financial successes. His list? He's got a list. I wonder where we are on that list. Ah, uh, is this book? Yeah, believe it or not. And Julia called. She did? You have an appointment. There's the address. Another place? How many places have we seen this week? You're a very lucky man. I can't believe she still puts up with you at all. And she said to bring your umbrella. Umbrella? when I walked out the door. I told you to bring an umbrella. Well, I had this. This head? Uh -huh. Steven, do you know Maurice? Oh, Maurice. And this, as they say, is the place. <laughs> Stay, Maurice. I hope it's not the same day as the last place. May I ask what sort of space Mr. Lowe is used to living in? Mr. Lowe is used to living in a hovel. I love my hovel. It's nice, your hovel. See, she loves my hovel. It's a hovel. He lives on the other floors here. You do, sir. It's all one house. It's a house? We're looking at a whole house? Why are we looking at a house? Maurice. Wow. Oh. Wow. How could a house like this possibly stay vacant 35 years? An amusing and intriguing anecdote. It is bought in 1962 by none other than J. Howard Sloan. Bought for his young bride, Margaret Dubois. Young lady divorces him two weeks after the wedding. He refuses to set foot in the place. Never sells, though, much as we try to convince him. This is the kitchen. Finally, he dies. The estate is tied up in the courts for years. That is amusing. And intriguing. I said it's a criminal that such a house should sit empty and unlived in for so long. A house of such beauty, of historical importance. So, one of Manhattan's finest gems is unlived in for 35 years. Not the exquisite quality of this woodwork. You just don't see this kind of craftsmanship any longer. The furnishings are all original and some... What did you do? It fell. You broke it. No, it broke. I touched. Five minutes in a house and you break the billiard room. <laughs> Many of the windows are in... Oh, my God. Wait. And now, the third Wait. floor. Oh. There is central heating. The furnishings are all original, and some date back as far as the 1920s. Question, Mr. Lowe? Yeah, did either of you happen to see an elderly woman come through here? The bedroom? Yes, sir. You are. Oh, fine. So, who lived here before the Sloan guy bought the house? A theatrical couple of some stripe, I believe. Eccentric pair, from the look of it. Yes, none other than Max Gale and Lily Marlowe. Quite the rage back when, or so I'm told. Just imagine if only these walls could talk. Bless you. Pardon, Mr. Lowe? You sneezed. Not I, sir. I'm sorry. I could have sworn that I thought I heard somebody. Sneeze.
Stevenson is beautiful. What? Yes, no, it is. You're right. It's very... It's very... Do you think you can afford this? I don't know if I can afford this. You can afford it. Yeah? Can I afford this? I dare say that you can, Mr. Lowe. You dare say? Well, I suppose I better call my accountant. I don't wish to presume, but it's for the two of you. Are these grapes? Is that what this... Very nice, this... I need to be getting back to the magazine. Right. Another delivery from the senator. Really? He's persistent, isn't he? And that, I assume, is how he got to be senator. Will we be canceling dinner with Stevenson? No, we should definitely keep Stevenson. For years, your stuff is so funny, you know, very perceptive and sharp, and it's all in your manuscript. It's a great story. You got a good Thanks. ear for dialogue, you know. Great, strong, believable characters that are. I mean, the whole thing is really very promising. Promising. You know, I want to read the next draft the minute you get done with it, because I, I mean, I just, I think with just a little stuff you'll have a tremendous first novel here little stuff uh okay well, next draft uh what is it exactly that you think is wrong with this draft the same sort of ironic distance that you that makes you a great journalist i think tends to subvert the emotion that i think the novel requires you know we're already negotiating a movie deal terrific they certainly won't notice if it's better. Hey! Sorry, Stevenson. I just wanted to poke my head in. No, not at all. We're, uh... We're just, uh, Brett Conway. This is Michelle. Michelle Tippett. Hi. Hi. I read your column. So, are you going to be writing for us? Us? I... <laughs> I, I, I should be going. You sure? Yeah, you... yeah, I think I have to, uh... All right, uh, well, you think on everything, and uh, we'll speak first thing in the morning. Great, all right? great. Nice meeting you. So. Oh. Mm. Stevenson, whatever you said, I totally appreciate it. Good. What, what did I say? I just had my interview with Mr. Van Ellsberg. Right. He's adorable. He is. He is? I... He loved my stuff. Well, I told him the truth. I said, uh, that you're the best art director in the business. He said he's looking forward to being very hands-on. I'm sure he'd like that very much. Okay, can you believe this? He wants me to work for Lowe and Sons. Full time. Full time? Here. Re um, so what would you tell him then? <laughs> what do you think I told him? I can't wait to work under you. Again. Here's what we hey, have on right. spirits. Good. All right. Did you see uh, Michelle? Michelle. How nice to see you, dear. You look great. So it turns out uh, <clears throat> Michelle is uh, going to be coming over here full time. Oh. And these, Jake from accounting, Mark from the printers, Olivia, Jennifer, Jane, to confirm your invitation to the player's New Year's Eve ball, and a new one, someone named Samantha. Popular as always. Sort of a husky voice. That's or, fine. No more throaty. Good. Throaty's good. <laughs> so? Well. Well. I guess we'll be seeing a lot more of each other. Just give me a whistle. You remember how to whistle, don't you? You just put your lips together and... Yes, whistling. I remember. Thank you, Michelle. 
Bye, Stevie. Bye, Amy. Welcome back, Michelle. Thanks. You know, and Van Allsburg keeps going on about the new configuration. He actually said that. I mean, I don't even know what that means, new configuration. What is Is that? everything all right? Fine. Yes, fine. Two coffees, please. Not for me. You know, the people there I've never even seen before. You know, a new copy editor, a completely revamped art department, and people look at me like, I don't know what, like, I don't know. What? We need to talk. Oh, no, 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 no. Wait, 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 Julia. Don't use that term. I know that term. I don't want to do this any longer. What? Eating duck? I don't want to do this anymore. I don't want to date anymore. No, no, no. We're not dating. It's, I mean, you know, it's more like we're together. That isn't and we're right. You know that, Vicky. Right. One of, us. of course it's right. Nothing could possibly be more right. No, it's not working and it's not going to work. I mean, you and I, we just want very different things out of life. No, not different. The same. We don't want different anything. We want different everything. I'm sorry. It's a house. I knew I, I never should have gotten an excuse, man. It's a whole house thing. It's not the house. The house is wonderful. You'll love that house. The house is for us. You know that. But only one of us will actually live Coffee. there. The other, in this oh. case, me, will continue to live in a very different the, the, house. No, I mean, no. Yes, the house, it's my house. You'll be there virtually all the time. Virtually? I mean, no, I don't do you mean virtually no. on weekends, or do you mean that no, it's a virtue I'm... that I'll be there, or I'll be virtuous <laughs> while I'm there? Or are you talking no, about our virtual relationship, which has all the features of a real relationship without ever actually being one? I don't want to do this anymore. Julia, this is ridiculous. Good night, Stevenson. Thanks for the dog. Doc. boy is what I would call the old ball and chain if it wouldn't do such a disservice to balls and chains. This tune was Lily's favorite back when she used to shake her patootie. Max as usual waxes grotesque. I have never shaken my patootie in all my life. He's thinking of one of his floozies. That is actually untrue. If I were thinking of one of my floozies I would be smiling. That son is the female of the species. Julia. What's wrong? Julia. What? What is it? What? What? I can't run in these shoes. What is it? There's an enormous problem at the house. Jesus, I've been going out of my mind. I mean, remember the new place. I mean, did you remember when I was coming down? I mean, did, did you feel anything weird? You know I did. Because I don't know. I, mean, I, was, up, I was up there today, and the strangest thing happened. I mean, there were these two. I, I'm looking in the mirror, and then I see two people, and they're all... I mean, is that possible? Could a man and a woman live in that house indefinitely? Of course they could. How can you be so calm about that? I mean, what do you think about that? Well, you know what I think about that. I don't know. I'm going to have to talk to Maurice, because I tell you, the whole idea just gives me the creeps. The creeps? Well, think about it. I have thought about it. you thought about it? About those things, those people, whatever the hell what they are? What are you talking about? This guy with a smoking jacket and this woman with a tiara. I mean, I thought I saw them the first time. Today, I definitely saw them, and they spoke to You me. didn't hear me. Can we just stay on the subject? Yes. I am on the subject. The subject is us. I'm not talking about us. 
I mean, now. I mean, I'm not talking about us now. I can talk about us in a minute or two. I just wasn't talking about us now. You were at the first time. No, Julia, don't. Please. This really wasn't what I was talking about. I wasn't even thinking about us. This is something really I important. Have no idea. That... I mean, not that us isn't Do you important. recall a conversation we had last April? April. Yes, April. You know the month where the rain comes down? <laughs> April. I don't remember. I know. I'm... Wait, stop. Hang on. Hang on. Julia. I love you. I couldn't possibly love you more. You know that as a fact. Listen, I know that I've been a little uneven lately, you know, but I just, I can't. I want us so much to, you know, I don't want to lose you. And I'm, you know, forget the whole thing with the smoking jacket and the lady with a tiara, you know, I mean, just forget the whole thing with the thing. Forget it. You know, let's, uh, start the whole conversation over from the beginning, okay? So, uh, imagine this, all right? You're walking out of your office building and here I am, right? Walking briskly up to greet you. We embrace warmly. Sort of. I give you a long, loving look. And then I say, Julia, that's you and me right here, right now begin our life together. What do you think? I think I just remembered why I love you. Baby has a new pair of shoes. Havana banana. These are great. Come in. Mr. Van Allsburg. Steve! Inson. Steve. Stevenson. Thank you for coming to see me. I wanted to ask your opinion about this young writer, Brett Conway. I think Brett's a very exciting writer. I, uh, fortunately, exciting doesn't necessarily mean that he's ready. But he's... 
Well, the reason I ask is because Lowe and Sons is going to publish his book next spring. <gasps> Hobbs and Brown. Actually, that's not quite true. Footwear of royalty. Oh. About Brett. I told him to try and oh, yes, draft. Oh, yes, yes, I and... know all that. Sit down. His agent explained to me about this... Uh, movie arrangement. And I thought it would be a sound policy for this company to be associated with that sort of project. Don't you agree? Uh, well, yeah, it's not necessarily. You get some new blood in here. Kick the dust off the shelves. You don't see those around much anymore. Mm. Uh, right. Um, so get rid of the dust and, um... Hmm? Yeah, now, Mr. Van Allsburg, Brett Conway is still developing as a writer. Oh, then he should develop here, selling books for us rather than for Gibbon Press. Isn't that so? Yes, but yeah, with all due respect, it was my understanding, I mean, really, I believe our understanding, that when this all came together with you and Hauser and Company and us, that I would be controlling the creative aspects of the business. And so you are. It's your show, Stevenson. What I've done here is make a simple business decision. Well, it's not, actually. Well, selling books is the business of this business, isn't it? Some books, good books. I know what you're saying. This was your father's business and your grandfather's business. I know that, I know that. And, and I sympathize. What I'm trying to do is see that it is also your son's business and your grandson's business. Is that so wrong? Well, what if you just left? Left? You mean as in Stevenson Lowe leaves Lowe and Sons? Leaving two, and in some cases, three generations of loyal employees behind? Yeah. I mean, you're capable of doing almost anything you set your mind to, and nobody believes in you more than they do. Except me. Fascinating. Absolutely fascinating. Easier to read, but do we want to read it? Subway derailments, voter fraud, turmoil in the Mideast. This, this is no fun. And what in God's name has happened to the Herald Tribune? Oh dear. Struck dumb. Childhood accident? Who are you? Ah, oh, yes. We haven't been properly introduced. Maxwell Stevenson Gale, actor, director, producer, impresario. And in spite of what my she-devil wife might say, the brains of this outfit. And who might you be? Oh, no, no. I might be Stevenson Lowe. Stevenson meets Stevenson. A grand old name, what? His name was like the lion's roar. Turkish holiday, Ben George, 1932. Say, are you a low of Lowe's theatre? No, uh, Lowe and Sons. The publishers. You're Jerry's boy? What a scoundrel. Uh, I'm a Harold's boy. Uh, Jerry's grand boy. A uh, grandson. Grandson? Oh dear, how time flies. Still, I'm sure the apple didn't fall too far from that tree. What are you doing here? I, I'm trying to find the theatre listing. Where they... You were uh, playing the piano, don't yes, you? Yes. And, and the woman that, that was your wife, I suppose. She... That was no lady, that's for sure. <laughs> what exactly are you two doing here? Oh, come, come. It is our house. I think I could ask the same of you. Oh, your house? No, no, never mind. It, it, it's nice to hear the pit of patter of tiny feet about the place. You're from good stock, and you obviously have good taste in the things a man needs. What? I do. The wife, Stevenson, dear. Uh, Julia. Quite a catch. Oh, she's not my wife. 
Even better, someone else's? No, she's, she's just, well, we're not married. Ah, <laughs> I knew it. You're a Stevenson, all right. Just like Jerry. Why fix a boat when there's no leak? Stevenson, don't let this foolish hobgoblin fill your head with a load of rubbish. Match me, dear. Enter Lucretia Borgia, till death do us part. Oh, if only. Oh, do something with your mouth, dear child. You look like a goldfish. Has this oaf made a part such your lovely wife yet? No, we... I don't know. No, it's only a matter of time. Max is like a little dog. He's always sniffing around or it's not polite. No, I, I was just, uh... That we were... I was just saying to... to Max, Max. Max. That, uh, we're just friends. Oh, so. no. No, dear child. Friends get a handshake at the door. Well, no, not just friends. You watched us? The idea of watching, really. Oh, goodness, that would be impolite. Not without its reward. Oh, do tell this halfwit to roll up his tongue. It's most unbecoming. You see what I have to put up with? You would think that death would allow some respite, but no. What Max forgets is that if he doesn't like it, he can just get the hell out of here and go off on one of his decadent romps. You know what, Stevenson? I have a brilliant idea. I think I'm in the mood for a decadent romp. No, all right. Now, this is the situation as I see it. You have relations with the girl. Well, where'd he go? The, so who? Well, him, Max. I mean... Well, he told you he's gone off. It's fine by me. But where did he go? Well, wherever he likes. Now, you have relations with the girl. That's fine. That's fine. I understand. These things happen, but my dear, my dear, I think you should at least be affianced. Rio in the winter. Nothing like it. Makes a man feel good to be alive. All the next best thing. <laughs> what say, Stevenson? Oh, really, some people simply never stop auditioning. Look, I, I'm sorry, this is all going a little fast for me. I really have to go back to, who are you? I mean, who are you and what are you Stevenson? doing here? Because I don't have the... Julia, thank God, you need to see this. Julia, this is... This is what, Stevenson? Well, oh, uh... Well, th this is my most favorite thing in the house. You see that thing where the whole wall meets the ceiling, and I, I love that. Do I? Yeah, I'm going to bed. Right. Right. Where's my razor? My razor's missing. Did someone take my razor? Where? Yeah, oh, thank just God. No, oh, I thought it was... I thought it was... Um... Never mind. mirror it is when I look at it I expect to see my face not some hallucination can some hallucination do this watch it are you okay do... yeah I'm fine I'm thank you do you mind does the little lady not allow company in the house I need to shave. Perhaps if you were to calm down a bit? Great. So now I got two people in the mirror. That's a big help. What is wrong with having a couple of perfectly delightful guests in residence? Well, one, anyway. Nothing. Not a thing. Perhaps you could be perfectly delightful all in one room. Having you pop up at any moment is going to wreak havoc in my relationship with Julia. Relationship? Yeah. Oh, I, I like that. Son, in my day, we had marriage and affairs. Yes, in Max's case, many, many affairs. Oh, uh, look, I'm sorry. Things are more complicated these days. People have a lot more options. Relationships can be anything you want them to be. I'm not married to Julia. She's my girlfriend. She'll move her stuff in, we'll live together. 
That's fine. I'm fine with that. I mean, why ruin everything with marriage? People say it changes everything. I don't want everything to change. I don't want anything to change. I want everything to stay exactly the way it is, except that I want you to get out of my house. What are you doing? What? Uh, Julia, whatever you think you may have heard, you can completely disregard it. No, I wasn't that's even that. talking to you. I wasn't even really talking about you. I mean, remember the, the people I was trying to tell you about. If you would stop, I've got to talk to you Why about this. You do a fine job of talking to yourself. You only heard half the conversation. Yeah, and that was plenty. Right, well, I've been quoted out of context. You're not ready, you're not ready. You know, maybe no, please, I. Please, Julia, will you let me you know, explain? You know, I'm really glad I didn't go through the whole humiliating process of moving on my things because that would have been embarrassing. But, Julia, I'm trying to tell you what you I don't heard have time up there. For this. Please, give me five minutes, all right? Julia, wait. Stevenson. You've got shaving cream on your face. <laughs> Capital. Short on style, long on effect. Must try it on Lily sometime. Oh, fuck off. Fuck off. Ah, the riposte of the inarticulate. <sighs> How am I supposed to get her back now? But you don't want to do that. This is the time to teach her a lesson, time to show your true character. I did. That's what got me into trouble. Face it, Max, you're out of date. You're worse than out of date. You're dead. There's no need to get personal. Stevenson Lowe is history. Glad to hear it. You got a call from the senator this morning. Wants to know how dinner sounds in Washington. Tell him dinner in Washington sounds divine. Got it. I've always loved Washington. It's good that I found out now. It saves me time, money, and pride. Very efficient. No more cards, no more flowers, no more late night phone calls, no more bribes, no more lies. He calls, I'm not here. He comes by, he doesn't get past reception. I feel good. Good. This is good. You don't get it, son. A girl like that, money in the bank. Oh, well, actually, Max, a girl like that is a human being. I my tie. She loves you. Trust me, she'll wait. That tie won't match. I hate to say it, Max, but women have changed a little since you were tomcatting around. Oh, Bosch. Bosch? Did you say Bosch? Hogamous, hygamous, man is polygamous. Hygamous, hogamous, woman monogamous. Some things never change, and woman happens to be one of them. She might wear different clothing, she might use different words. She might change her mind about whether she wants to go out to work or stay at home, but she does not change. Listen, Max, I'm not gonna take romantic advice from someone who's condemned to stalk this earthly plane while not talking to his wife for all eternity. You're in your prime, son. 20 to 45, the best years of my life. More women than you could shake a stick at. And I was a very accomplished stick shaker. Yeah, well, stick shaking isn't what it used to be. You don't want to get married. What you want is to fall in love. Again and again and again. The adrenaline of the new, not the haze of the comfortable. That's who you are. That's what you want. I know you. You're a Stevenson. I'm a Stevenson who's out one girlfriend and now I'm late for work. Do me a favor, find out how my book is doing. I know she's there, Lee. You can't tell me she isn't she's there. Not. She's really not. Tell her to call me back later, okay? I know when you're lying, Lee, you sound like Julia Child. You think what you want, but name calling isn't going to We publish this? Low and Sons, 1937. How'd it sell? Special edition. 28,000 printed, 28,000 sold. Really? And this is hot off the press. The updated spring list. Oh, great. Great. Yes. What? A thousand one names for your cat. Please, 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 please tell me this is some kind of a joke. Oh, well, it is a joke. Yeah, I'm good one. A joke that's gonna put this company on the map now. A cat if book? 150 years of quality literature, down. eight Nobel laureates, and now a cat book. I'm sorry, a cat name book. I mean, a monkey could compose a book like this. <laughs> Perhaps now's a good time for you to uh, meet our newest author. I'm Monica Gilroy. How are you? I, I'm I'm Stevenson Lowe. I'm sorry about the... Stevenson, let's see. 769, right between Stacy and Stinky. Right. Cats. Speaking of Stinky, this is the Colonel. You take him, darling. Oh, I should have warned you, Monica, something of a live wire. Huh. Right. 
Uh, uh, listen, I'm sorry for the... Oh, no, wait. No, no, no. You've got to hear this. Charles was just telling me over dinner the other night about... what. Well, Charles, why don't you tell him what you said? Oh, oh, yes. Hot off the internet. Fascinating material. Apparently, the three most popular book topics in the United States are cats, golf, and Nazis. <laughs> so, what are we... Are we supposed to publish Calico Stormtroopers of the PGA? I mean, I, this book could be a serious blow to our reputation. Oh, I hardly think so. As a matter of fact, Monica's little joke book is going to sell more copies in six months than the entire works of Dorothy Parker have in the last 60 years. And we do want to sell books here, don't we? Would it be at all possible for you to knock every now and then? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm just not used to house guests. This is the first show that I was shackled to the screaming Harridan. Uh, Alibaba and his 40 wives, in Max's case, a low estimation. We really were the talk of the town. Yeah, perhaps the town should have shut up every now and again. It's quite an act. You have the bickering couple. Yes, quite an act. Act my aspirin. She was such a sweet young thing back then, so full of life, so full of potential, waiting to be unlocked. His company was worn down to the nape before I came along. He couldn't make a hit out of bosoms on parade. <laughs> Alex Wolcott said to me in 1922, the only sure thing in this business is a Max Gale show. Yeah, Max only had to pay him $100 to say it. Listen, but before you two start exchanging gunfire, you still haven't explained to me what the hell you're doing here. Oh, don't be silly, dear. We live here. You live here? You're dead here. Again with the personal attacks. We can occupy our own house for as long as we like. So you don't know why you're here? So long as the Queen of Pulchritude stays out of my way, I'm as happy as a clam in butter sauce. But you're supposed to move on, right? Or unless you've got some kind of unfinished business or something, right? No, I'm perfectly content to stay here. Fine. But, you know, we have to establish some rules here because... It'd be... For starters, you are not allowed to interfere with my love life. I mean, I've completely blown it with Julia because of you two. She's left town. I, I don't have any idea where she is. You want her back. That's a healthy response. Well, of course I want her back. You want to know where she is? Hell, I, I can find her. Hold on. Did you see that? I mean, how does he do that? How does he... Can, can you do that? Oh, surely. Anywhere I want, any time I want. Yeah, Monaco, London, Samaritz. Washington. <laughs> She's gone to Washington, D.C. What? what? How do you know that? I went to her office and looked in her appointment book. No problem. She flew to Washington today. What? Will Dodge is in Washington. Oh, my God. I wonder where she's staying. Oh, Baba. Do you think that... Could he warn me when he's going to do that? Well, yes, if he had any respect for human life. Oh, are you, are you going to Washington? 
Oh, as soon as possible. I'd better come oh, and help no. you. No, over my dead body, or oh. perhaps more appropriately yours. <laughs> there. See for yourself. You know, you, you see Macaulay on TV, he gives nothing away. I, somehow he pulls that stuff off. But you guys, you ran that one picture and completely captured it. That was Sarah Slow. She's been with us since the beginning. Stevenson, hello. Oh, Stevenson. I've heard a lot about you. Oh, you have? I've, yeah. I, well, I've seen you on uh, C-SPAN. Mm -hmm. You look great. Doesn't he look, look so uh, weathered? Frankly, much taller than I. So, what brings you all the way to Washington, Stevenson? Uh... Well, uh, the book, you know, the... the book. <clears throat> but, yeah, you know, you know the, the book that I'm, I'm doing, we're, we're doing, uh, my book publishing company is doing a book of the, the um, well, about the Washington and D.C.? Yeah, Washington. Um, about uh, Washington. Ah, and, uh, well. So that's what I'm here for. <laughs> I'm kind of Mr. Washington. So if I can help you out in any way, just let me know. Can I get you anything else, sir? No, thank you. Yeah, I, I'd love a cup of coffee, yeah. Um, so, uh, uh, the book? Right, uh, <laughs> um, not really the book. Uh, you know, uh, the person I really need to talk to is Julia. W would you mind if I did that, just to talk to Julia just for a moment? Stevenson, maybe we can do this another time. No, I actually, I think this is the absolute best time to do this. How did you know where to find me? Well, that's actually... You know, can I just have one minute of your time? Yeah, 30 seconds. I think what Julie's trying to say here is that maybe now is not the most fortuitous time for this conversation. Yeah. And telegram? I just realized that you have an urgent Western telegram Union. at Western what? Union. What? Yeah. You have an urgent telegram at Western Union. I mean, I have an urgent telegram. Why would you have an urgent telegram? No, I, I think she means a telephone call. He means a te telephone call. What are you talking about? I mean, he... No, I'm just trying to help out. You meant a telephone call or perhaps a fax or an email or yeah, anything but a telephone call. It just came into my head. I don't know. It's silly, you know? Do you mind? I just thought of it. Mm. Stevenson, I think you should leave us. Will. <laughs> I'm sorry, I meant, uh, Will. Will, I think Stevenson should leave us. What? No, I think what she's trying to say, Will, is that maybe you should leave us. That's not what I said, Stevenson. I said I think you should leave us. In fact, I think you, you should, should leave Dan. In fact, I think I love you, Will. What? You do? What are you talking about? I'm sorry, I didn't really mean exactly that. No, no, it's okay. No need to apologize. No, of course you didn't mean it, Julie. I mean, that's just crazy talk. House. The fact is, I'm glad you moved out of my house because you're really starting to put a crimp in my garden hose. Stevenson? Wait, oh. No, I didn't mean that. Would you get the hell out of here? Hey, you get the I hell out of here. I don't mind being asked, but no. I don't respond was, very well to orders. No, I don't mean you. I wasn't talking to well, you. What do I you was... mean? No, I... Let's do his level. Well, if he's not going to leave, then maybe we should. No, wait. If you, no, if you go off of them, you'll regret it. Maybe not today, maybe but not soon. tomorrow, but soon. And for the rest... Wait a minute. That's... Yeah, I remember the scene, Well, It's when Rick tells Ilsa to go off with Victor. Come on, Well, Julia, no, no, I'm wait. I'm changing my number, David. I'm changing my number. Don't try to call me. No, I, I didn't mean that. Could I talk to you, both of you? Just for a minute. No, that, that's the end, all right? The end of help. Do you understand that? I want no more help. Help isn't working. Well, I was only doing my best, dear. Well, your best stinks on ice. And Max, what the hell did you think you were doing? Getting your girl back. What? You must show her who's boss. 
That's the only thing women understand. The only thing Max understands is infidelity. It was the same in Hamlet in 1938. Every night he was groping an usherette during my mad scene. God alone knows what he was doing behind the arras. Lily, as per usual, allowing her petty jealousy to mar the evening. God, if I were only ten years younger. And alive. Me being alive was never our problem, dear. You being alive was a problem. You were on your last legs when I pulled your chestnuts out of the fire. Well, you died on me, Lily. You died on me before we could settle up. You followed along two weeks later. What was I supposed to do? Return to the theatre after you used up the best years of my life? All right, what would... Time out, all right? Now, here's the point. No, here's the point. Well, that was dramatic. Don't listen to a thing she says, young man. Follow her advice. You might as well get yourself a collar and leash. Max, I'm telling you, women don't respond to that kind of posturing. And... Would you excuse us for having a conversation here? <laughs> Very rude. Marriage is the worst mistake I ever made. It ties you down, cuts you up, takes away the things you love. That's heartening. They trick us as what? Well. All those long silences, all those games. They get inside our heads so that we'll jump when they press the buzzer. Somehow this doesn't feel like buzzer pressing to me. You know where Julia is now in the arms of Will Dodge? <laughs> Tough break, old boy. He's been after her for two years. Her loss, son. You know you're the better man. <laughs> He rides horses, he's a self-made millionaire, he's great-looking, he's a U.S. senator, he's very tall. Yes, but do women really go for that sort of thing nowadays? Hell, if she doesn't want him, I'll marry him. Let's find a bar and have a drink. Max! Come on, it's Christmas. One drink. Two tickets to New York, please. Uh, yes, sir. Well, this has been an, an excellent evening. To good times and to good friends. You bet. It's funny seeing the two of you go at it back there. What's funny? Well, it's just, it's just, I've never seen you two actually ever talk to one another. That'll be $120. Right. You're so beautiful. I can imagine. So beautiful, you can't imagine. I can. Believe me. Voice of a nightingale. Face of a goddess. Marrying her was the best decision I ever made. One might contend you have a difficult time expressing it. Well, that, I think, is a problem. Dear Stevenson, our least noble trait is complete inability to appreciate our own achievements. Exactly. What? We want it, we work for it. We do everything and anything under the sun to get it. But once we have it... Oh. Once we have it, it's... Hi. Excuse me. You're on, kid. Hello. You're Stevenson Lowe. That is my name. I thought I recognized you. Please, sir. Well, it's nice to be recognized, isn't it, Max? Yeah. Uh, no, my name's Sandra. Sandra Houston. What a beautiful name. Sandra Houston. Slow down, Max. Slow down. Thank you. Um, I was at the talk you gave at Columbia last spring. Oh, right. Uh, was it of any use at all to you? Oh, yeah. I loved it. Especially the part about integrity in the workplace. Well, integrity in the workplace. Mm. Sandra, that is a lovely necklace you have oh. on. You can do better than that, do you think? Why? Do you? Oh, my. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Um, it was my mother's. What? I love it. Well, it's delightful to make your acquaintance, Sandra Houston, in her mother's necklace. <laughs> Oh, gosh, I feel stupid now, but, um, I'm a writer. A writer? What? Well, thanks. A writer? Well, excellent. <laughs> so, well, you know, I, you know, I would love to see some of your work. 
Monica. Would you? I seem to be having a terrible problem with you. It's all right now. Um, your work, I would love that. Are you going to New York? Um, yeah. So are we. You and I. So. You all right? I'm great, boy. Truly great. You're not here because you're angry at Stevens. No, I'm here because I want to be here. I just can't believe he did that. <gasps> <laughs> Me neither. Yeah. Thank you. Oh. Yeah, I'm all right. Please come in. Sonia. Ah. Good evening. This house is so beautiful. Yes? Well, thank you. You know, it used to belong to uh, Max Gale and Lily Marlowe. Who? Can I get you something to drink? Um, just some juice will be fine. Juice? I hope this child wasn't one of your pickings. The boy reeled this one in all by himself. What we need now is a little mood manipulation. Miss, Mr. Lowe? Please call me Stevenson. Mr. Stevenson, is there something wrong with your electricity? Oh, this is comfy. One juice. Wow. Well, I'll need something a little more uh, complicated for myself. Um, Mr. Stevenson? me i was never big on grace and dignity that's good what are you doing now? well i think the question is what are you doing not home hmm are you well is he at your place or are you at his place <laughs> you asked me what <laughs> very nice choice mr stevenson who's that what that no that was a uh, woman <laughs> A beautiful young woman. She happens to admire me immensely. I think she's going to be a brilliant writer. She's brimming with integrity, and she's got an excellent workplace. Mr. Stevenson, there's really something wrong with your electricity. Well, on the train, I was... Ah! Ah! So what's he like in bed? Mr. Stevenson! Don't tell me. I know. He's rugged and laconic, and he's got a firm grasp on the range. Hold on. <laughs> Mr. Stevenson! It's, no, don't worry about that a bit. There's plenty more juice where that came from. Why do you always have to bring everything down to your level? Hello? Fine. Be that way. I'm gonna have fun tonight. That child doesn't even lots, know who lots, she lots is. Lots of fun. She's legal. I'll get that juice now. She can make up her own mind. Then she's going to do it without you. Uh. <laughs> hey, now we're ready for some work. Where's my friend? 
Ah, uh, she had to go. Perhaps you've had enough tonight, dear. Perhaps you're right. Tell the truth. Would you really have been happy with that child? For the rest of my life, probably not. For tonight, very possible. Where's Max? Uh, Max is lying down. He also has had a little too much tonight. Where's Julia? How do you two do it year after year? Well, we're dead. That's a big incentive. Well, the only time you speak is to fight. Oh, fighting, my dear, that's what we did. In the end, it was all we did. Look at him. You should have seen him when we met. New Year's party, costume sort of thing. He came as a sheik. He thought he looked like Valentino. What were you? Well, I thought I looked like Cleopatra. I'm sure you did. He was so dashing, so funny, and a great actor too, you know, the best I ever met. So what went wrong? Well, Max has his faults. There were many women to whom he was not, shall we say, indifferent. But you knew that. I mean, you knew that. Well, I thought it would pass. I think it's a sad loss that men have such an aptitude for love, coupled with such an inability for managing it properly. One might think you were a wee bit jealous. <gasps> jealous? I admit, walls did go up between us, and I'm afraid nothing can bring them down. So, uh, I find that impossible to believe. Oh, it's true what they said. We were the best of friends and the worst of enemies. And now it's too late. It's just too late. I feel like the worst with Julia would still be better than the best with anyone else. That evening, feeling adventurous, we found a place on one of San M's narrow streets with no English on the menu. At Cafe Las Tortugas, we started with conch ceviche, guacamole, cilantro laced pico de gallo, and margarita. Party's over. We followed that with chicken enchiladas drenched in tari, mole, and more margaritas. Not those foo foo frappes sipped by drag queens and co eds, and not some premix from a bottle, but real Mexican martinis, tequila, fresh lime, and triple. Truly, go away, Steve. I have to talk to you. She doesn't want to talk to you. I can handle this, ma'am. I don't want to talk to you. God, you look terrible. Take some vitamins. Or maybe a long vacation. We left the large, translucent sea turtle shells, glass floats, and other select flotsam snared in the fishnets on the walls of the I'm so sorry about that whole... The, uh, the telephone call the trip to Washington. You know, I just feel so badly about that. I don't know what the... between two adults. You'd be one, I guess I would have to borrow the other. <sighs> Julia, it's all I'm asking, please. When? Tonight. I can't tonight. So, tomorrow night. She can't tomorrow night, she has plans. Miriam, it's New Year's Eve, I've got plans. Plans? We never go out on New Year's Eve. Well, things change, Stevenson. Yeah. You know, I once wanted this more than I ever wanted anything. I just don't want this anymore. Julia, you know, it's... just come by the house tomorrow after work, okay? All I'm asking for is 10 minutes. Five minutes.
this is never gonna work. No matter what, Julia's gonna end the night playing submarine with Will Dodge. Hello, Gladys. Hello, Mr. Lowell. I'm trying to line up in my mind the worst, most humiliating times in my life up to this point, and I haven't yet come up with anything to top this month. Adolescence was a breeze compared to this. Hey, lover boy. Get How's bent, it? Larry. You've made the gesture, dear. All you can do now is keep giving her rope. She'll either hang you or string up Mr. Dodge. Oh, my God. What is the topic of discussion? We're talking about the relative possibility of Julia Stevenson, choosing... I've got the layouts for the cat book. Not now, Michelle. We're talking about... Well, when? I don't care. Pick a time. Later today. Whatever. <laughs> We're talking about... But today's New Year's Eve. What? Whatever. That's fine. We're talking about the relative possibility of Julia choosing me over Will Dodge. That's a tough one. He's got a lot going for him. Health, looks, power. And I hear he's very well off. Oh, well, that's a big help. Thanks for showing up. Perhaps you could reconvene back at the house. Fine. Right. Oh, I forgot your muffin. I'm having a very bad morning. Then you're batting a thousand. What is it? The latest updated spring list. Fighting the female fat cell? I thought that one might strike you. He can't do this, can he? I mean, he can't, can he? It all depends. You're damn right it does. Consider the description. We don't have to think about this as a family operation any longer. Excuse me. Oh, Stevenson. Glad you could join us. You know the gentleman and lady from Hauser and Company. Look, I, you know, I know this isn't a creative meeting, but I really have some things that I've got to say. We always look forward to your input, Stevenson. You know, it's, 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 the thing is, ultimately, what we do here is publish books. I think you all know what a book is. At its best, it can be a doorway into another world. Someone picks up a book, he's got a world in his hands. He can travel in time, he can read another man's mind, he can communicate with the dead. I know this because I've spent my life with books. My family has been in this business for four generations. Four generations. Nathaniel Hawthorne said, it takes a great deal of history to produce a little literature. I have no intention of throwing away that history. Not for you, not for anyone. That's it. Well? Well, I told them what I thought. <laughs> Did they listen? They didn't talk, that's for sure. Do we still have jobs? That's a different question. Stevenson! That was great. Excuse me? Stroke of genius. I've been trying to light a fire under these sticks for months now. <laughs> we should have you in on all our meetings. You should. I, you've got a real gift, Stevenson. A gift for getting people excited, getting them to see the big picture. Well, thank you. I'm... In fact, we've decided we want you to personally supervise the Fat Cell book. Congratulations. <laughs> big things, Stevenson. Big things from big thinkers. Big, 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 big. Well, that went well. I have completely ruined my personal life. <laughs> and now the business is going totally to hell. Stevenson, be truthful. The business is not going to hell. Oh, it's precisely going to hell. Diet books are right down there with the hoarders and wasters. The business is doing just fine. The fact is we're going to make more money this year than we've ever made. It's just... It's just what? It's just that it's a different business now. Michelle. Oh, Stevenson, there you are. I thought you weren't going to show. Show? You told me to bring by the layouts for the cat book, remember? Tonight. When did I say that? Is it a bad time? 
It doesn't matter. I can come back later. No, 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 it's fine. Uh, yeah, please come in. Make yourself comfortable. Wow. This place is great. So I guess that little merger hasn't been all bad for you, has it? Yeah. Okay, so let's see what you've got. Hi. Comfy. What are you doing? You said to get comfortable. Oh, I hope you don't mind. No, I, um... No, it's just I, I have some people coming over in a bit, and I'm... You look great. So do you. Um, you don't have a date tonight, do you? You're not going to that New Year's Eve thing, that costume thingy. Well, I'm... <laughs> No, no, uh, not really. What, what do you mean? I'm... You need to relax. You've been under too much pressure lately. Ha! <laughs> this is gonna sound strange, but what? I'm... What? What? Oh, is it my dress? I've lost so much weight, I don't even know what size I am anymore. <laughs> dress is great. Oh, it should be. I spent a lot of hard shopping hours buying this thing. <laughs> Well, I'm paranoid that it might be sagging. Right now, the dress is not sagging anywhere. Well, maybe it's a knockoff. You know how I feel about knockoffs. Uh, Could you just help me out a minute? I have a little tag back here. No, no, maybe no, no, Michelle, no, 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 well, not, not that you should go. It's just, uh... What? What is it? Well, it's just I do... I have people coming in a bed, and I'm... People? And I'm not presentable to no, people? No, that's, that's, <clears throat> that's not what I meant. Julia. I... It's Julia, isn't it? Well... I, mean, I just want to know who you're standing me up for. I mean, this, this conversation really isn't going the way I wanted well, it to. Well, of course it's that... not, because you invite me over here tonight, and now all uh, of a sudden you're worried about I... the first lady of publishing coming in and what, finding us like... Mm. 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 Julia! I must be early. No, I... Not at all. I was just leaving. Zip me up, will you, hon? Don't fret, Miss Winston. We are definitely just friends now. Happy New Year. <laughs> Julia, you'll laugh when I tell you what... Laugh, really, when you tell me? Oh, really, this is hysterical. I mean, she... Uh... Look, this isn't even my I color, know, really. I mean, shame is a perfect color for you. It suits you extremely well. But you see, when she... I see, I see perfectly clearly. The... No, I know this looks bad. It does Julia, look bad. It's very different now. You've got to believe it. I'll go for another. Goodbye, Stephen. Julia, this is absurd. I'm
Stevenson, how nice to see you. Let me introduce some friends. Two new writers, I trust. <laughs> writers. Mr. Van Allsburg, you look, uh... Oh, those are some boots. Oh. Handcrafted. I'm sure. Enjoy the dance. Have a good time. See you later. Who made it to the party? Max, there you are. What brings you here? Well, what brings you here? New Year's Eve. It was right here, wasn't it? What's that? It was right here on this night when you first met her. Met who, dear boy? I, I don't <laughs> quite catch your meaning. Lily, your wife. It was right here on this night, 1927. Well, if you say so, yes. I, I don't have much of a mind for ancient history. And you come back here every year, don't you? Uh, let me think. Max, tell me the truth. Those women you knew, all those women, all of those years ago. Yes. It was a wonderful time, wasn't it? I wouldn't trade a minute of it. But then it ended one day. Well. Well. Stevenson, I love beautiful women. Show me a beautiful woman, and I will show you God's greatest creation. But Lily, oh, Lily. The moment I met her, I knew. One can't take that sort of thing lightly. But how did you know it was Lily? Why Lily? Why? Is there a why, son? You meet that one person and, and you know it in your soul. You feel it deep down. There's no denying it. It rocks you to your very foundation. There's no such thing as saying no. It's really just that simple. I think the same thing that brings you here. Oh. You look wonderful okay. tonight. Care for a dance? Oh, I wouldn't say no. <laughs> I just come here because I like the atmosphere. Oh, the colors, the lights, the costumes, and the music. It makes for a little nostalgia, doesn't it? I suppose so. Time's gone by. Old Lang Syne. Why not? Memories of forgotten love. I promise you, young man, I have the slightest idea what you're talking about. Comes here every year. Ridiculous. Where should he? He rules the day he met me. Well, the night he met him. But he's here right now. Don't be absurd. I've been coming here every year since 1962. I haven't seen him yet. He's standing right over there. Oh. 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 Did you put him up to this? Oh, I found him here by accident. Oh, oh dear. <laughs> <laughs> you have 
Rudolf Valentin. <laughs> In his wildest dreams. <laughs> Julia, Will, excuse me. Uh, I came here tonight to track down a couple of friends, and uh, as long as I'm here, I just want to apologize for being such an ass. Anyway, I'm sorry. Sorry to interrupt. You look lovely tonight. Congratulations, Will. You're a very lucky man. We both look very happy together. You as an important novel in there somewhere. I wouldn't be surprised that if, if you told your own story. I need to talk to you. Oh, Stevenson, what's the matter? Can't find a woman who'll dance with you. <laughs> I think I made a mistake not coming in uniform. Oh, would you ladies mind if I borrow the general just for a moment? Just, just step into my office for a few moments. Anyway. There's something I want to talk to you about. Stevenson. The gentleman and lady of Hauser and Company are very fond of you. In fact, we've been mulling over a new position for I you. I can only wonder. Something more public, more visible. You know that integrity is a huge <laughs> selling point these days. Just imagine how many copies of the Fat Cell book people would buy if you could get them to think it was important. You know, Mr. Van Allsburg. No, wait, 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 wait. It's New Year's Eve. Why don't you call me Charles? Okay, Charles. Oh, oh, oh. Make that Chuck. Chuck. I'm afraid, Chuck, that you and the gentleman and lady from Hauser and Company from now on are just going to have to make do without my services. Tough negotiator, huh? No, I, <laughs> what, are, what are we talking about here? Are we talking about more money? No, I'm are we not talking about uh, <laughs> stock no, I'm, options? I'm talking about going out on my own. I'm not negotiating, I'm quitting. You know what you're saying, Yes, Steve, I do, it? Chuck. I certainly do. I'm saying Happy New Year. Lily! Oh, what was that? Did I hear someone call my name? Lily, we must do something. Oh, how strange. It sounds like my husband, Max, but oh, that cannot be. Lily, be serious. He's going to lose her. Who? Oh, the girl? Come with me. Why would you have in mind? I want you to dance with me. Madam, would you do the honor and dance with me? Good sir, I'd be delighted. May I say, you look extremely fetching tonight. You may, thank you. May I say, you look extremely funny. <laughs> Excuse me, may we cut in? Hi. What's the matter, dear? You look as though you don't know whether to laugh or cry. Uh, I know. My, you are rather strapping at that, aren't you? <laughs> oh, what's he doing? <laughs> Love dances, lost between laughter and tears, with a whirl of joy, and the embrace of melancholy. What did you say? Nothing. Just some uh, Yates or Keats. Oh, my dear, are you all right? You look as though you've seen a ghost. You? A gentleman in the smoking jacket. The lady in the tiara. Where's Stevenson? Stevenson. Ladies and gentlemen, it is now ten seconds before midnight. Let's do it together.
Stevenson. Ta-da! You don't need to say anything. I should... It's me that needs to speak. <laughs> Fortunately, I don't know where to begin. Take a deep breath. I've been thinking so much about you and about us and about all these things that... One thing that I believe, just one thing that I believe in this world, it's that we may only have one chance to meet, to find and be with one special person. And if you're ever lucky enough to find that person, then I believe no matter what, you have to care enough to hold her keep her and never let her go well, because you may only get one chance well i found that person i know that more than i've ever known or felt anything i had that chance and i was careless and foolish and i didn't hold her and i didn't keep her and now i've let you go Stevenson. Julia. I love you. I love you. I love you. I can't think of anything else to say. But if I can just ask you one thing. I think I should be on my knees for this. I can't think of a decent segue. I'll settle for an abrupt change of tone. Will you marry me? Yes, I'll marry you, Stevenson. They really don't write tunes like this anymore, do they? I dare say they do not. Do you remember David Riddle? No. no. <laughs> he was great. Oh, yes. He knew how to throw a party, too. And Jenny Newell. Such a voice on oh, her. Oh, God. <laughs> what a talent. <laughs> and Billy Warner. Mm, oh, I had such a crush on him when I was a kid. It broke my heart when he married Debbie Upshaw. No, you mean, uh, Ursula Pemberton? No, I don't. I don't mean Ursula Pemberton. Uh, Ursula Broadbent. Ursula it's, Broadbent. Yes, she was, That's a, she was a second wife. Where did they all go? Uh, the same place we should be heading to, my love. Of course. Hmm. You're right. You always were. Lily, mm -hmm. I don't know how to say this. I, I, well, to take take a deep breath and give it a shot. Lily, you're a hell of a girl, and I, I love you. I always have, and I always will. I want you to know that. Forever. I love you too. How 
did we forget? We didn't forget. We just looked the other way. 